One, the drive leg's responsibility is to accept this incoming force from leg lift, right? So as we descend from our leg lift, our drive leg needs to be able to stabilize that. And while stabilizing that, now produce force into the ground. Okay, that's ground force production. I'm sure you've heard of that. Now, in order for us to really maximize that, we have to look at like the angle of essentially like our knee and our foot and our back hip. Like we need to look at all of that to see how well are we stabilizing that force. When we look at you, as you come down, you'll see that all three aren't in line, ankle, knee, uh, hip. And I also see that you're doing a very common thing in terms of hip coiling, shooting that head back over that back foot. That's not wrong or right, but it's your body trying to perceive what is powerful in the ground. So in order to do that, you have this kind of false representation of putting energy into the ground by just shifting your trunk over this back foot so you feel like powerful and sturdy. But like I mentioned, it's a false representation because you're not actually getting that drive leg essentially corkscrewed and having that stable in the glutes, right? That's that whole conversation of quad dominant and, and, and hip hinge and all that stuff. But in reality, the glutes are something that we want to utilize in our delivery because it's the strongest muscle, right? Like that's how we maximize that stability is if we actively engage that, that glute. And, and you can see that the, that's cracking forward and you're trying to defy that by leading, leaking with your head back. Now, Scherzer, someone that moves exceptionally well, it's kind of unfair to compare people with him, but look at where his positioning is with that drive leg compared to yours. And I mean, he still has that kind of head shooting over that back, but I mean, look how much more he has that drive leg in that corkscrew position to feel really stable and feel really strong, right? Now, if I were to jump, if I were to try to like really express a ton of power, I'm probably not gonna do that by taking my foot, knee, and hip into a different position like this way right? It just doesn't feel as powerful compared to there, right? Again, this is a motor control pattern that doesn't happen overnight. I'll be honest. I still struggle with this. There's a lot in terms of movement, mobility that you need, and overall just more repetitions doing the right rep, right? But uh, we see that in your long toss get cleaned up pretty well, to be honest, dude coming down, boom, stability, and now see how that knee kind of holds stable, and now it goes into hip extension as you come down. Now, here's the next biggest piece. All of this whole quad dominance thing, in my opinion, it's leading into a misdirection, which leads into an early trunk pull, which leads into a limited amount of hip shoulder separation. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm not trying to overcomplicate you, man, but I just want to get you to understand, watch the direction of that drive leg, how that knee is going to shoot forward at like a 45. And now the only thing that your body can do to feel that it gets back online is to pull your front side earlier than it needs to be, right? So now you kind of have this early glove side pull, almost like this glove side fly out, but it's not really flying out. It just has to give uh, it has to pull a little bit earlier because your direction is off alignment. It's a little crossfire, right? So now when you come into front foot landing, you know, your hip rotation is really good. Like it's, it's rotated on time, but since your trunk is having to rotate prematurely, you're not fully able to maximize that separation, right? So all of this is going to be simplified. I'll, I'll, you know, I promise in the report that I send you just to give you like a better visual as far as like what I see. It's about like your direction, right? So here's your boy Kimbrel. Now notice as he come down from this leg lift, that back knee is gonna be in line with that ankle. And now as he starts to move his momentum forward, see how the direction of that drive leg is going in the desired target of his catcher. So now he's able to essentially counter rotate that trunk and now come into front foot landing with his trunk not having rotated at all,
but his hips are rotating. So that's that maximizing of that hip shoulder separation, right? So the trunk is delayed because the, the direction is optimized. And now the, the trunk rotation or the, the completion of the hip rotation now brings the trunk rotation. And then the trunk rotation now brings the arm through. So you're having to basically throw with way less arm when you just move right. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> Who would have thought?